Listen only mode. Welcome to this edition of Condi Talk. I'm David Gross with Condi Systems. And thanks for being part of this webinar. Please submit your questions. We look forward to answer those questions as time permits. Let Condi Talk be your key to success in growing your business. The topic is shown below. Let's get started. Ah, welcome to this edition of Condi Talk. My name is David Gross, and I'm honored to have uh, Sprite with me. Good morning, Sprite. How are you? Good morning, David. I am fantastic. How are you? Oh, good. And Jeff Butler is at the controls. Jeff, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I think he is. Okay, we've got a great subject for you today. And um, our topic is our new Color Light Acrylic. And the Color Light Acrylic is really, to me, brings a completely new dimension to the world of sublimating decorating. And uh, for, you, for you folks out there that know uh, a little bit about sublimation, I want to I want to play a little video clip about what Jeopardy says about it. For 1600, please. Jimmy, putting dry ice in water shall transforming directly into a gas, a process called this. Uh, memories of high school chemistry. <laughs> Sublimation. Let's look at the 2000. Uh, isn't that great? I love that clip. Well, uh, what is sublimation? Well, we're not really going to talk too much about it, but basically sublimation is just a, a fantastic way to make custom photographic quality products. And as this list points out, you've got a, a lot of uh, opportunities to satisfy what I call the um, Google mentality. You know, people want it out, they want it their way and they want it now. And with sublimation, you can do that. You can produce um, custom products in minutes. They're high value, and um, we have thousands of substrates. And this art, this uh, webinar is all about the the new color light acrylic. Um, just as a way of introducing, you're in listen mo only mode, and you're going to have the opportunity to ask questions, and we'll try our best to answer them, of course. And if if we don't have the answer, we'll see if we can find somebody who does. Um, in addition, at the end, we're going to have some prizes for folks that were part of this webinar today. And we are recording this webinar for folks that want to view it uh, again and are for folks that, that weren't able to be part of it. Um, I published a few days ago, um, I published a new article, and we'll get it somewhere uh, on our website. And it's uh, published by the fine folks at a and &E. It's their custom GIF uh, retail uh, edition. They call it the Mid-May. And uh, did a lot of uh, great new exciting products in this article, but just talking about uh, the retail opportunities for called digital decorating in the sublimation world. So it's a lot of fun. Got to mention, of course, about the acrylic and quite a few other products. Let's get into what is um, this technology. So to make a long story short, uh, many years ago, we began an investment in our own coding facility and started building our R&D staff to really create what I would call breakthrough technology products in the sublimation world. And um, we really didn't know where it was going to go, but we, we knew we wanted to um, bring more and more products back to the United States so that um, we were using uh, made in USA products. We were um, employing folks that um, were um, very good in their fields and we have had an incredible success. And quickly one of the first products we wanted to do was to come up with a coding technology that essentially was almost clear that when you put it on products like um, glass or acrylic or film, it was viewable from both sides. In addition, through um, really coding uh, magic, if you will, we created what I think is the world's first 
product that allows you to sublimate the appearance of white uh, into a product. So if you look at the photograph on the, the slide, you clearly see her dress looks white. And uh, the coating technology in the color light coating is what does that. And so uh, this webinar, of course, is about the acrylic. And the acrylic, of course, is um, a very common product out there. It's uh, fortunately we're able to buy acrylic uh, very easily in the United States and uh, really works out. And as you can see from these sample of products, it's um, just absolutely gorgeous. So the Color Light Acrylic that uh, is our first number of products they're producing, it's a 0.22 inch thick, what they call extruded acrylic. And extruded simply means that, um, uh, that there's a couple of ways that acrylic can be made. And our first offering is really three panel sizes. And you press them flat, as we'll talk about more. And then we use a little cooling jig. And uh, Sprite's going to go into a lot of details about that. In addition, we intend to bring out a lot of products that are related to um, small items like keychains, um, you name it, that um, um, can also be, be cut. And the best part is that um, the acrylic is, um, can be laser cut. So anybody with a laser um, can definitely um, get into the acrylic game. So it's a, it's a very exciting uh, new, um, new product. Uh, are y'all hearing that beep? So Yes, I, I was, beep? but... Okay, I don't know where it's coming from. Um, Sprite, uh, would you like to jump in? Just um, what are your comments at this stage? So this is some of the most interesting things that I've ever sublimated. Um, I say interesting because it's it's fun to be able to mold it in your hands and to see um, you know how it takes shape and. Uh, it's also extremely beautiful. Um, in my opinion, it looks better than the glass, I'm, I'm sorry, the metal, and the metal to me is just beautiful. So, um, you know, it, there are a lot of steps to this product, but it's a, a very high value product, and it, it really is, is fabulous, and it's fun to make as well. So, I really enjoy this product. I'm going to try to find out what's going on with the... Uh sounds here because I don't know um, what's going I don't on. see any questions either so okay <laughs> hopefully people are hearing us um, so this is uh, just a sample uh, piece that we we did is one of our first pieces and it shows you the two different views of it, and it is just outstandingly gorgeous in fact I, I'm not sure I've ever seen another piece of acrylic um, that was so beautiful. Uh, let me see if I can turn some of those sounds off. And the, the really good thing about that piece too, especially, is the difference in the, the dark and the white. You can really see how black the black is and how white the white is. And you're doing that on something that is see-through, which is, has really been impossible in the past to do with such clarity and such vividness. It is. It's uh, outstanding as far as that. Swipe, so talk to us about what we need. Okay. Well, you obviously have to have that sublimation printer. Um, you have to use the text print paper. Um, I tried originally to use uh, just the regular SPP paper and it was a mess. It stuck. So you have to use the text print paper. You have to use Pro Spray because the only thing that can touch the face, the shiny side, is that pressing pad. Um, so you need your cooling jig, obviously, and you also need a 1 16th inch green pad and of course you need a press preferably the swing away so you know quite a few things but it, it like I said it pays off in the end it's a really good product to have so one of the items on there sprite that people probably aren't going to be familiar with is the acrylic pressing pad tell us about it 
So the acrylic pressing pad has to, like I said earlier, has to um, be the only thing that the face of the acrylic comes into contact with with um, and you can buy it in the different shapes that our acrylic comes in the 5x7, 8x10, um, 11x14 and uh, David if you want to go to the next screen for me um, and I've had a lot of questions about this you know how many times can I press it well you can use it a lot of times I've used mine numerous numerous times and really the way you tell whether or not it's ready to be replaced is that it literally falls apart um, you can see there's two images here and <laughs> I wish I would have had the other part to the one piece that it, it literally separated and fell apart so obviously I couldn't use that piece anymore but the other piece that almost needs to be replaced has been pressed probably about 10 times maybe 12 times and you can see at the very top it's starting to split but all of the square and all of the color in it doesn't matter because that's not going to transfer onto your uh, your acrylic it's not going to pick up any color at all all the coating is on the back side so like I said you can use that pad until it literally falls apart and you're going to get about 15 presses out of it so it, it ends up cheap but the the reason that we have to have it is because when acrylic gets warm it will mold into whatever surface it touches and so we have to get the acrylic hot enough to sublimate it and so what that pressing pad does is it keeps the face of the acrylic cool enough to where it will not take on any texture and it keeps it nice and smooth so that when you do take it out of the press it is you know it has that nice gloss finish and it doesn't have any divots or anything like that in it so you know it is an integral part of the pressing process but you know it's it's pretty cheap so it's not that um, you know it's okay yeah so so we would not put a piece of paper against the glossy side of the acrylic what goes against the glossy side um, is the acrylic pressing pad Yes. Let's um, tell us about the other odd thing that we need. Okay, so in order to get that nice curve in your acrylic, you have to set it in something in that shape and allow it to cool. And so we have these nice uh, cooling jigs. They'll come to you um, already put together. And so you take your acrylic out of the press and you flip it over so the shiny side is facing up. And you start to bend it just slightly with your hands and kind of set it into one side of the press. I'm, I'm sorry, not the press. Set it into one side of the jig and just kind of let it fall into the other side of the jig and I actually have a, um, a Facebook live post that shows me doing it and you can really see just about how much to um, bend it and exactly how to put it into the press and um, I showed a lot of our sales reps here how to do it and um, they were pretty much champions that first one is kind of tricky but um, it's just because you're not used to being able to mold stuff out of out of the press you know normally we take things out of the press and they're either you know it's either metal or fabric but you know this is different because it does have that bendability to it um, and so you know it but about that second time you get a feel for it and you know you're able to do it pretty successfully after that um, I was actually have a client that said um, you know it is easy to work with and it does press very consistently so um, you know but this is a very once again an integral part of the pressing process of the acrylic process you have to have this cooling jig and then once you yeah, have so, your yeah so people will will ask I'm sure Sprite they'll ask well um, do I have to use an acrylic or just can I can I keep the piece flat so we we did a lot of testing on trying to get the acrylic flat and really it doesn't work because the acrylic and the coating they cool at different um, times and so that coating cools and it shrinks and the acrylic kind of doesn't it 
expands and so what happens is you get kind of a bowl effect where that acrylic or the the one side the mat uh, kind of the mat side gets smaller and the acrylic gets larger and so you get a big um, bow and so we tried actually to um, use weight and the face of the acrylic it really does pick up every slight just the tiniest piece of dirt will and like I said, we yeah. tried extensively to get it to where we just could not get it to lay flat, um, which is why we have the glass. And the glass, you know, is nice and flat, and it has the same color um, coating technology. So, you know, if you don't want that curved look, you know, you can always go with our new um, color light glass. Yeah. Glass so. is gorgeous. Yeah. Now, for as the piece gets smaller, we are successful with with pressing flat. So. You will see uh, in the near future, like keychains and ornaments and earrings and all sorts of things that are small. But as the piece gets bigger, it really is just uh, thermally unstable, and it just doesn't cool correct. And that's where really the, the glass um, is going to be your, your champion. Yeah, well, an acrylic, it has a melting point of 356 degrees. And because of a piece of... A, a substrate that's five inches by seven inches that's going to take a while to press and so that's going to heat the acrylic up to that melting point whereas if we're doing a small ornament it's not going to get that hot so we don't have to worry about that acrylic becoming unstable so yeah okay so really the first step in all this is is to print the transfer and as Sprite mentioned um, not really anything unusual here except what's the big except sprite do not mirror your image <laughs> um just like I, i'm assuming that i'm correct one out of three <laughs> is that right david so yeah you need to okay. not mirror your image because you're you're going to view it um and i suppose realistically if you did mirror the image um then um uh, you know, it just isn't going to work because um, the um, the uh, viewing is is you know always on on this, the sides of the product. So um, that's an interesting question. So if you did mirror it um, on one side, would it be correct? So that'll be something. Um, my mind's a little foggy right now. But if we did mirror it, would one side still be correct? Um, yeah. Yes, it would. Um, you you would have the uh, the mat side would be correct, and you would have it instead ah. of the curve being away from you, it would be towards you. So, so. I guess in thinking about this, um, this would be the world's first product that um, you actually could do either way. Um, come to think about it, so if you did mirror it, the the glossy side would be be correct, but not the the, the mat side. So. Um, quite interesting. Um, the other thing that, that Sprite covered was the text print paper. And the text print paper is critical that um, we, we keep the paper from sticking to the coating. And then, of course, uh, the minimum bleed. Why, why do we need to be concerned about our bleed, Sprite? Um, well, the uh, um, you don't really want a lot of that ink transferring onto your acrylic pressing pad. Um, you know, it, like I said, it's not going to press into your um, acrylic at all, but uh, you really don't want a, a large bleed um, on any of your substrates, it really, and it, for it being a, being a square, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be that hard to line up. You're also going to need to trim your uh, your paper as well, so uh, that gonna, that's going to come into effect also. Okay, so let's move along here, and and these are the the pressing steps, and really, of course, we press and then we curve. Walk us through this, right? Okay, so the top one you see her, she has. Um, Pro sprayed her, her uh, image, and now she's laying the acrylic um, coated side down onto the uh, transfer. And then on the next one, which is the middle one, she has a piece of butcher paper on the bottom platen, um, and then on top of that is a piece of uh, acrylic pressing pad. And then she's taken the um, 
acrylic and flipped it over so the shiny side is facing down and the image is up or I'm sorry the image is on top of the uh, acrylic and she covers it with another piece of butcher paper and on the bottom she is pe uh, placing a 1 16th inch green pad on top so that's the way the sandwich goes it's um from bottom up it's butcher paper acrylic pressing pad um, acrylic uh, shiny side down coated side up then your image then another piece of butcher paper and then the 1 16th inch green pad so the um, if folks out there already have a green pad unfortunately it's likely that you have the eighth inch green pad we our times and and the whole process really is engineer around the 1 16th inch green pad so that's what you need so just sort of um, to review from the from the bottom up is the acrylic pressing pad it's the acrylic with the glossy side down the matte side is up transfer is face down piece of paper and then the green pad is that correct yes that is correct okay good deal so after we've uh, done that, we're going to take it out of the press, and then what? So after you take it out of the press, you want to manually start to bend it with your hands. And this is a good image because this shows about how much you're going to bend it. You don't want to bend it too much at one time because that's going to put stress on the coating. So you just want to bend it slowly, and then you place one end into the uh, the right side and then you just kind of allow it to fall onto the left side um, but you want to make sure that it is bent enough so that the corners aren't going to hit the little uh, the the uh, <laughs> the outside pieces of the jig so you just want to make sure you have a nice bend in there um, you know and that it slides along the uh, the edges of the there's bottom lips of the jig and you want to make sure that it's fitting along those bottom lips of the jig and then once you have it in the jig you just um, cover it with the top and then allow it to cool for about 10 minutes and then that's it you should have a very beautifully uh, decorated piece of acrylic um, and of course the results are, are you know, worth it. Um, you get amazingly bright, vivid colors. Um, and, you know, a common question would be, well, I have an Epson uh, with sublimation ink, an Epson desktop, or I have a Rico, or I have a SG400-800. Um, we've tested on pretty much everything that uh, is in the marketplace, and the results are, are superb. Um, if you're using an Epson, we recommend the Textprint XP paper, if you're using a RICO or SG400, it's the text print R paper. Um, also, with the larger printers like the um, so that that's you know higher volume uh, product. So those inks uh, even work a little bit better. And then of course you can go up to to big production printers like um, the Epson F series or the Muto. So it really is a is a great fit into um, any of those. Um, obviously, it's photographic quality, but you can, of course, use it for graphics and art and vector or whatever. There's no 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 real limit for it. Um, again, this photograph I love because uh, Sprite took it um, and shows what's on the other side and is just beautiful. And then, of course, the the uh, the really highlighting white areas that are in your, your photograph are, are really something just surprising and unique, but it really adds a lot of, um, um, I think, value to it. And of course, acrylic is, is uh, durable. You can knock it off your table and it's not going to easily break. So uh, it's great. Um, there are many markets, of course, that you could sell into for acrylic. Um, I think everybody may be having a, a few of markets that they they work in but what I tell everybody is um, don't let your opinions get in the way of making money and you can pursue new markets um, step out of your comfort zone and and look at all the opportunities that are out there knock on some new doors um, there's just so many markets so for instance um, 
my dad was a veterinarian and one of my favorite markets is the pet market well why not go and call on your your pet groomer and offer these kind of products with a partnership um, because nobody takes their dog because to the pet groomer because they have to and you could offer a beautiful um, curved acrylic piece for the the owner's dog for instance i have a golden retriever and i would absolutely pay good money to have uh, my dog which is now getting old have sort of one of those pictures of when we put the Easter ears on our dog and tried to call it an Easter bunny uh, those kinds of things but there's just so many markets that you can sell into <coughs> excuse me um, corporate markets are all over the place you think about um, the events that are going awards uh, so many things so um, Sprite um, what have you heard from our clients as far as um, some of the markets they're selling into um, some of the things um, I've seen which are really just ingenious um, a lot of people have been doing uh, greeting cards you know a nice five by seven greeting card wedding invitations you know um, that's something that you want to keep forever um, you know and get maybe the mother of the groom or the mother of the bride or uh, just the bride and groom themselves a nice present for them um, uh, restaurants having menus um, you know sitting on the uh, end of the table uh, which is a great idea because they're easy to clean um, and then you know they're also very nice looking they look um, very nice uh, we have a company that does um, newspaper printing um, and they do different awards with newspaper and it looks really interesting um, also signage it can be good for um, you know different signs uh, at weddings or maybe parties or you know um, uh, hotels uh, you know larger markets or even um, you know uh, smaller markets I mean it's really um, it's a it's a great product because it has a bunch of a lot of versatility and it just you know I just can't stop saying how like really beautiful it is uh, once you have it in your hands and you see the color it's it's amazing and just the things you can do with it no matter what you do with it 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 just it adds the value to it now let's so. talk we'll walk through a couple of photographs here here's just a little bit larger version of of um, the photograph Sprite took it's just absolutely gorgeous um, beautiful this is a uh, photograph of our one of our clients that uh, was one of the early adopters in the acrylic market and just publishing some of their stuff. If you look on the far, the, the bottom right, you'll see the wedding invitation, and that's beautiful. So um, just some incredible markets. Here's the piece, um, uh, just, you know, sort of the husband, the, the little, little girl looks like, um, beautiful. This is a piece that um, I picked up on our client gallery, and I don't know if folks out there are familiar with our client gallery, but if you go to condi.com, you'll see a link where you can see what people are, are posting. And this is just a, really a sharing part of our website where you can share with others um, to help everybody grow, and um, just absolutely beautiful. And so. You know, for instance, in our community, we have a couple of religious uh, bookstores where people would go to get First Communion uh, gifts, things like that. And, you know, calling on those kinds of people and introducing yourself so that you can provide a, a custom product uh, for them. I mean, a lot of folks, they are not thinking about how much it costs. They want to get something that is very meaningful and would be cherished for a lifetime. So calling on those those kinds of um, uh, bookstores is uh, very valuable. Shows you a, a corporate piece, um, uh, just, just again, uh, very attractive, um, high value, um, and, and I love the ability that it's a, it's a, it's a self-standing piece uh, meaning that um, you know you don't have to worry about some kind of easel or something like that. It's easy to move around, put on a bookshelf, just uh, very attractive. Uh, we had another client that just sent these into us. Um, they apparently have done quite a few pieces of acrylic, just showing some of their their beautiful work. Um, really uh, outstanding. 
Bright, talk to us a little bit about selling prices. Um, so the selling prices of these, there's a great range uh, depending on you know how you want to market it and and what market you want to be in um, so the five by seven um, they will go anywhere from twenty four ninety nine to thirty four ninety nine um, the eight by ten uh, 39.99 to 49.99 and the 11 by 14 I've seen anywhere from 59 to 69.99 um, you know they are uh, just beautiful pieces um, they do hold a lot of value and the photo reproduction is just out of this world so um, it is a high value you, um, yeah, when, um, when I teach my classes, I, I tell everybody about the value equation. And number one is, of course, the, the substrate itself. Some substrates just um, <clears throat> have a more built-in value than others. Number two is, of course, the artwork, uh, what goes on it. And you can be very uh, ingenious with your artwork to add value, to make it a more personal product. And that's where... Um, I'm just amazed at the talent of our, our uh, clients. And then number three is the selling uh, environment. Are you, does your selling environment look like you're a flea market or does it make you look like a, a, a boutique or something like that? I had a um, friend of mine that had a, was taking a vacation in the Keys and um, after she got back from vacation, she, was, uh, she called me up and she says, by the way, I saw one of your pieces of acrylic um, in a um, in a gallery in the Keys, and I said okay. And uh, we were talking about. It. I said, well, how much were they selling it for? And it was a five by seven piece, I think, and they were selling it for one hundred twenty five dollars. <laughs> now, of course, that one hundred twenty five dollars had a whole lot to do with the the artwork that they were reproducing, I'm sure. But the point is that. Um, uh, that if, if it looks very attractive, um, it's probably going to fetch a lot of money. When I got up this morning, uh, I did a little search on Etsy and didn't spend a lot of time, but I found one of our clients promoting uh, theirs. Um, they're selling it probably a little bit below what they can get, um, I think, um, but certainly uh, there's some good money for, for the piece of acrylic. Um, the point is that, um, you know, Etsy, I see a lot of, you know, really low, low prices on Etsy. Um, and you can only have, provide a certain level of service on Etsy with their, you know, with customization. But the point is that, um, um, you know, certainly we're and trying to understand uh, where the prices are going. Um, as uh, Sprite mentioned, I think is uh, the sort of the next generation of acrylic based products uh, will be some of the small things like um, a Christmas ornament, like a keychain, like earrings. Um, what do you think about those products, Bright? Oh, I'm really excited about this. Um, these have become extremely popular. Uh, these right here are just the keychains. Um, uh, and also for Christmas ornaments because they are you can see them from both sides uh, I can just imagine them being backlit with the Christmas lights and just looking gorgeous um, and for just keychains themselves um, I actually got a few in to test and I <laughs> was throwing it against the pavement and I could not get it to chip or <laughs> the coating to come off so they're just they're going to be great products and you know and it's fun for me because you see that nice big piece that has that great reproduction value and then you can put it into something small that you can carry on your keys or you can wear on your ear or your ears which um, you know I just think that's really really fun and it was actually really easy to press because you didn't have to worry about um, you know bending it at all um, and uh, and I think it's you know once we start to delve into the jewelry getting into the different pendants we can do and earrings I think that's going to be um, even more fun so I'm you know I'm really excited about this there uh, the, this really is almost limitless in the amount of things that we are going to be able to produce with this acrylic and eventually we will begin to sell sheet stock 
so that folks out there with lasers will be able to cut their own products and then they can have some some incredibly unique products so um, uh, as people know maybe they read some of my articles one of the first things I think about is what we refer to as base substrates and that's the building block of all the products we produce and the, the color light acrylic is that is a brand new base substrate which doesn't happen too often and so it's pretty much uh, limitless what we're going to come up with and we're also going to begin to coat um, and, and experiment with thinner uh, acrylics just to see what we can do and uh, we will also turn our attention to larger um, or thicker pieces of acrylic so um, the coating technology just looks for a home through something that's clear like a glass, like acrylic, or like film. Um, so um, as we finish up today, and uh, we'll, we'll cover a few questions, um, we have a special offer for people, and so we want to include with your next order from Condi, we want to include an imaged piece of acrylic. It will be a 5 by 7 That's the photograph that we own. It's so you can experience and show your clients firsthand uh, the beauty and the the excitement of holding it in your hands, sitting it on a table. So all you need to do is just really um, uh, mention it uh, to your your uh, Condi sales rep. If um, if you're placing your order online in the comments section, just mentioned that um, you want to take advantage of the CL1 free offer and put that in the comments section, not in the coupon section. So go in the comments. And uh, with that, um, I want to uh, award some prizes uh, to a few of the folks who, who have been part of us at this webinar. David, real quick. And uh, real go quick, ahead, David, Jeff. We, we've got a couple questions. You want to answer a couple questions? I got after this, we're going to go to the questions. Okay. So um, um, we'll get the prizes out of the way for folks. Um, so can you um, can you pick uh, a random name out of the list there, Jeff? Rhonda Fletcher. Okay, Rhonda Fletcher, congratulations. Uh, you have won a $250 Condi credit. So thank you for being with us. Number two, Jeff. Bill Maloney. Bill, you have won a $100 Condi credit. Thank you. And number three, Jeff. Matthew Clement. Matthew, you've won a $50 Condi credit. So thank you. To get your, to redeem your credit, just simply touch base with your Condi rep, Jeff, if you will, so um, we can remember them. And uh, we thank you. And now we want to move to our questions. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, first question, how thick is the sheet stock? It's uh, 0.22 inches thick. Next question, when bending, if you don't get a smooth bend, is there any way to correct it? Sprite? Uh, no. Um, once you have it bent, you cannot put it back into the press. Um, but you really shouldn't have, um, you know, just, just use that smooth pressure and, you know, place it into the jig and you should be fine. But, uh, yeah, once it's once it's bent, that's it. Um, even if you were to try to repress press it with the pressing pad, it just um, it just doesn't work. So. All right. Can you use a clamshell press to press the acrylic, or what issues may you have when using a clamshell press? I, yes, you should be able to use a clamshell press. Um, and so, again, clamshell presses usually put out a little bit less heat. Um, but it's uh, certainly my professional opinion that everything should go well. Um, if I'm doing it, I'm probably going to put um, stuff like this towards the back of the press. I'm probably going to uh, put it in a landscape orientation. Uh, but I don't really anticipate too many issues with a, with a clamshell press. If you, of course, do experience issues, uh, please, please contact our support. Got a few questions on time and temperature. You you guys want to just run through the time and temperature pressure kind of thing one more time? 
Yeah, Fort Sprite answers your questions. Please understand we do have complete instructions. Um, when you go to the product, as if you're going to buy it, you'll see a link for the instructions, number one. We have a uh, number of videos that will help you with technique. So the videos are really a visual representation, but when it comes to time and temperature, um, please refer to our written instructions. Uh, go ahead, Sprite. Okay, so for the five by seven, um, you want to press it at 400 degrees for two minutes and 15 seconds, and that's with medium pressure. So that's a you know a nice firm pressure um, that's not too light, but you don't want to put too much pressure to where you're going to smash the acrylic pressing pad. Um, I had one customer that was pressing so hard that he was only getting one or two presses out of the pressing pad. So just a nice firm pressure. Um, that's the five by seven. The eight by 10 is uh, 400 degrees at two minutes and 45 seconds um, with the same amount of pressure. And then the 11 by 14 is three minutes and 10 seconds. Um, hold on, I thought I knew them all. Uh, let me, yeah, let me just say that as a caveat. So um, yeah, uh, this, three webinar minutes is, yeah. this webinar has been record, is recorded today and we're going to put it on Condi TV for people. So it is very important as the instructions might change a year from now, for instance, or our techniques might change. So please refer to our printed instructions on the website for the most up-to-date um, um, instructions because I suspect a year from now we're going to have different thicknesses of acrylic, the product line will have greatly expanded, and so uh, very exciting times. But please, um, you know, go to our website for the, the uh, current version of the instructions. So is there any additional UV protection with the, with the acrylic itself or the coating on the acrylic? Anything they need to know about that? Um, so this is our only product, um, and we have not done any testing outdoors. Uh, probably we'll get around to just seeing what happens when it goes outdoors. But indoors, you have relatively little UV exposure but our coating certainly has a UV package in it and should hold up well from uh, door, uh, UV sources, it's like a little bit of UV through your windows, a tiny bit of UV comes from light. Um, but I don't expect any uh, issues regarding indoor. We've uh, um, been looking um, here two years. Um, the development cycle has been about two years and so um, the glass was sort of um, so I don't I don't think we had any um, um, have any challenges so I, I would say you're good. Ultimately sublimation uh, is headed outdoors. You'll see more and more products that are um, rated for we'll call them short to medium term outdoor usage. And that's very exciting. But um, for right now, this is an indoor product. So let's talk. Uh, I personally know that it's a, this is a very durable coating. Uh, it has some questions on inspections upon arrival kind of thing. You want to talk about the durability of this new coating? Well, I, I would say it's always wise to inspect your products upon arrival for, for any sort of miscellaneous damage. As far as the um, durability of it, um, obviously, if you take a key to it and you try your best to scratch it, which I have done, of course, um, you, you can, you know, drive the key or screwdriver or whatever deep enough to where you're actually digging into the acrylic itself. But <clears throat> as far as the um, everyday durability um, with the expected kind of use, um, keychains, things like that, um, in a purse, uh, we should, we should be well the expectations are um, for the life of the product and of course you know in a, a self-standing model um, you might hit it and knock it to the floor you know you know a dozen times but I think we're going to um, greatly exceed um, the the expectations of, of our clients 
Um, I, I will say that um, when the acrylic is warm, when the coating, coating is still warm, um, it is uh, a little, uh, I guess, finicky for less work, lack of a better term, but as it uh, cools, it hardens and it, it gains that uh, durability so you do have to be careful when you are putting it in the jig because that's when the coating is you know has the uh, that's when the coating can be compromised yeah, and that's that is of course the rule for all products is that while it's still hot it's actually the 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 gas the dyes that are sublimated into the coating they're still very active and you don't want to do anything that would would disturb these dyes. So, um, you know, that's sort of uh, the, one of the first lessons uh, of School of Hard Knocks and Sublimation is be very, very careful with a product that's hot to make sure that um, you don't do anything like uh, if you move the transfer paper while it's still hot, you'll of course get a shadow print. So the, the coating definitely is fragile while the acrylic is, is hot. It needs to cool and then it's um, it's a very hard hard coating. Fantastic guys it looks like uh, that's it for the questions so if you all want to wrap it up. Okay so um, you know what's the next step if you need more information obviously we made the um, offer to you for a free uh, image piece so you could see the product and touch and feel it and you're welcome to torture it give us your feedback of course. You of course can email us at sales help at condi.com. Um, you can call us. And a really great resource period is our, our video channel, which is conditv.com. We have um, almost an unlimited number of videos. And if you go there, there's a little search button towards the middle of the page where you can search um, just our channel and you can type in the word acrylic and see the videos. And so Again, this is sort of really the very beginning of the acrylic product line. And uh, um, Ed, um, also be sure to uh, maybe get you a piece of the glass. I think you'll find the color light glass to be stunning. And uh, we can expect a webinar on that. So Sprite and Jeff, thank you. And thank you for all the folks that participated. We will put this... Um, uh, up on Condi TV as quickly as we can. Uh, thank you again. All right. Thanks, guys.